we just started doing this thing yeah, where you yeah. post the inbox stuff to the forum instead of emailing. Yeah, because you know I was getting I was getting so many questions in my inbox that I was I was missing like really important questions you know for, or not questions I was, I was missing like really important emails you know from companies saying like hey we want to give you a million dollars because we love your website and I would miss that email and then a week later I'd, I'd, I'd message them back and be like hey that million dollars that you were going to give us oh no we already gave it to Linus <laughs> yeah we're still waiting on that ten thousand Bitcoin donation anonymous <laughs> anyway from Doctor Salty Nuts he asked what is flops. And, you know, we always talk about the flops, and it's usually in regard to graphics cards. Um, gotta love those floating point operations. This, this question is not something that specifically needs to be answered by Wendell or myself. It's something that could be answered by the forum. So and that's exactly what way, happened. Yes, yeah, exactly what happened. So I'm glad we have this new forum here where you guys can go and hop in and, and do this. Uh, NJM, Z-Train, they both hopped in there, and they did a hell of a job answering this. But just since we have it on the screen... Um, Floating point operations per second. Now, Wendell, this has been a problem in, in the world for a long time. Well, it's, it turns out floating point was sort of a hard problem in computer science in the 60s and 70s. And so it was like, well, you know, how fast is your computer, one university would say to another. And it was the speed was measured in floating point operations per second. And it turns out that that's still useful today. It's just It's basically just crunching data. It's not yes. like doing random stuff. Like a CPU is really good for just multitasking and random stuff and not necessarily just crunching numbers. Like if you're going to be uh, like, okay, OpenCL, Bitcoin mining, flops are important for that. Um, stuff like, uh, what am I thinking here? Uh, oh, password, like cracking passwords and stuff. Brute force cracking passwords. Remember when the Russians figured out, hey, we can use our, uh, our CPUs to crack passwords uh, like WEP protection and WPA one, I think. They, well, they started using graphics cards, and then they were much easier to crack because of the flops. Well, because graphics cards are designed to do that kind of thing a whole lot faster. Yeah. But it's really interesting. Even if you look at CPU architecture, Haswell is one of the first architectures where they're sort of decentralizing in the whole core thing. And so, like, historically, computers were very generic, very general-purpose computers. And now, on the CPU, it started out with, like, the MMX extensions, and so the MMX exten uh, extensions were designed for vector operations. Well, and, before that, it was like a math coprocessor. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of. Yes, no, yeah, you totally had a math coprocessor for doing math because the CPU was even more generic, and it was integer operations. Yeah. And then you needed a math coprocessor for floating point operations because integer operations were more generic than floating point. Right. And you could emulate floating point on, you know, without, God damn it, shut up. Well, that's just how it is here in the office. You're, you're talking about, like, all this really, you know, brainy stuff and you're like i can't figure out how to make this thing stop beeping <laughs> <laughs> somebody no one of the guys did something to my phone and now it's like hello i'm siri and it's like it's just funny because it's an s3 so it's not really at all oh so they installed siri on your s3 yeah so i don't even it's bad that's what happens when you lay your phone down for five minutes around here yeah i've got a lock thing on my screen now but someone's <laughs> someone's going to pay <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have a lock on your screen and you've got a room full of techies everywhere playing yeah, with your phone. It's really bad. But anyway, um, so with Haswell, things are sort of becoming less specific and more specialized. And so on Haswell, there's a unit for doing the multimedia encoding so that you can do that really fast. And they've got. And that greatly helps. I mean, it's yes. like a huge improvement. And even even though Ivy Bridge had the first thing, you know. And like this, Quick this Sync. is a step ahead of that. Quick and Sync, well, that was on Ivy Bridge. It was, it was it came out. Yeah. And so. There's, even on some, uh, some Sandy Bridge had that as well. There's all this stuff that are like these little independent modules now that are being, being built into the CPU. So it's got these little specific islands of functionality within the CPU. So flops matter less now because you've got that kind of functionality. So, like, if you want quick sync and you want the alx extensions or whatever on haswell that you you know there's not really an apples to apples comparison with previous generation hardware and uh you know i said we weren't gonna answer that question but we did answer it it's fun to talk about that kind of stuff sometimes so yeah we we rambled That's why I for like, like 10 forum. minutes hopefully that'll be edited down to something reasonable well you know i, I love having him in the forum this way because the you know the community can go ahead and start talking about this stuff that's not something that specifically we need to answer and then we can jump in there and talk about it if we so choose so you get your answer and you get your cake and you get to eat it too and there's a beer here. Indubitably. From Catulsi. What is your favorite browser? I'm sure he wants to know. Hi, Logan and team. I'm not sure why I've decided he has this voice looking at the avatar there. Um, Seems legit. Yeah. What's your favorite browser? I prefer Firefox because of all the use for plugins, but I use Chrome every now and then as well. I hate e IE like the plague. What do you guys think of Opera, Safari, etc.? Thanks, Rolf. Okay. 
Well, let me start off with Safari. Safari is worse than IE. I, I, I did say that, yes. IE is, is the worst. IE is the worst, but Safari is worser. <laughs> it's just because <laughs> of the Apple factor. Well, it's not only that, but like, if you ever look at like these different hacker conventions and stuff, they always like have a contest to see uh, you know which browser can be compromised the fastest. And Safari always loses. It's like three seconds, and Safari is compromised every single time. So uh, Opera and Firefox tend to hold up the best. Firefox, I was really, I almost went over to the Chrome camp, but then Firefox really started improving stuff. You know, I like Chrome just because it gives you a lot more desktop real estate, real estate, and it's only that top bar on Firefox that bothers me. Firefox has the best functionality. It's it, it's definitely really uh, secure. I like the way the plugins work, and as far as developing websites go, it is far superior to anything. Now, I use Chrome eighty nine percent of the time. I like Firefox having my 11% of the I like time. having my tabs on the left side of the screen, and you can't do that with Chrome anymore. You used to be able to, but they took it out, and I haven't been able to figure out how to get it back. And at one point, one of the Chrome developers explicitly said, "No, I am deciding it is this way," and that sort of gave me a sour taste. Yeah. So, I, you know, Firefox works really well, and Firefox with the tabs at the side is amazing on widescreen monitors. It looks like most people use Chrome, and if you look at our uh, analytics, we uh, Chrome and Firefox are both way up there, and I'm very proud of you guys. Like, people that come to our website, it's like 2.6% on Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer is so terrible. I think Safari might even be, like, higher than that, but maybe 4 or 5, because all the Apple haters are, like, looking at our website going, I hate these guys. People love to look at stuff they hate. Have you noticed that? If something's on the radio and they're talking about something you disagree with, you'll listen to it because you want to hate them. I want to really like the Apple operating system. I just don't feel like that they're engineering top-shelf Unix engineers anymore, that they're really focusing on fluff more than Unix engineering. Yeah, because fluff sells. Fluff really, really, really sells. <laughs> we, we kind of answered this in the, uh, the TAC this week, this last week, a couple weeks ago. Do we want to talk about that now? I mean, not really. Online privacy is very important. He wants to know why, why people care about it. You don't have to care about it. Just send me... If you don't care about online privacy, send me your credit card information, send me your email account passwords, and send me your social security number, and then see how much you care about it. Okay? Because I'll buy, I'll buy everything. Okay, what the devil... <laughs> the ad on this website is like a half-naked person. Reload the page. I don't want to look at that. It's for a full portrait session. I don't you know. The ads on our website. God, I hate ads on our... Oh, B&H. Uh, that's pretty cool. This one's from Phobia Waver. Full overclock. I've never tried overclocking, but I bought the parts so I could, and I need to know how I can overclock my MSI GTX 680, my 3770K, along with my Corsair Vengeance 16 gigabytes RAM. If you guys could please help me out, it would be appreciated. Oh, and I have 1250-watt power supply, so I'm not worried about underpowering this rig. Well, you've told us everything except the important data. I don't know what your motherboard is. I know you've got an MSI GTX 680, so you can download MSI Afterburner and you can play around with overclocking there and check out some forum, forum articles, or you can post some questions here on our forum. Now, overclocking, uh, you know, just answering it like this is not going to happen because it's too in-depth. I'll give you the bottom line. You have something called a multiplier, and that's going to control, like, you know, a multiplier of 35... Uh, or 36 or 37 is going to be 3.6 gigahertz if you have 100 no i can't even get into this it's too in depth talking about the strap and everything else and the voltage what you need to do for a basic overview right now the only video we have available is a video i made last week with jj or a couple weeks ago by the time you see this click there and just, just watch it that'll give you some help uh, and as far as overclocking your RAM goes, it's very simple just go into the BIOS and uh, up it, up the uh, voltage on the RAM and up, up the uh, frequency and just don't worry about anything melting. Just put everything to a thousand. It's like yeah, most people don't realize. You know, it's uh, a lot of CPUs are designed for you know 1066 or 1333, and Intel's really conservative on that. Um, the XMP profile is not really overclocking. The XMP profile is that your RAM really is designed to run at that speed. It's just that Intel and the memory vendor don't really agree. Intel's really conservative, and the memory vendor's saying, "Oh no, I totally support 1600 or 2166 or 20." 400 or whatever you know I, I i just wanted to have some fun this week we had some kingston beast memory that's rated at 2133 and uh you know i was kind of curious to see how much of a performance increase you get in video games when you jump from um 1333 which is what it clocked it at you know i put the memory in there and uh you know the haswell cpu and the motherboard were like oh we're gonna make this 1333 so because it's really conservative because that's intel so i i went i mean i'll admit that it wasn't a mistake at first i went into the mother into the uh operating system and I ran a benchmark, and then I was like, wait a minute, my RAM is still 1333. So 
I kept that benchmark and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a couple more benchmarks. So I benchmarked three or four games with 1333 megahertz RAM and then I upped it to 2133 and I gained less than one frame per second. It's like on average around 0.6 frames per second and I tried multiple games. Now we should also emphasize that our experience with the AMD platform is exactly the opposite. Depending upon which AMD platform we're talking about here. Now, yeah, um, that's true. The uh, recent AMD, AMD at platforms. Yeah. Well, also, if, you, if you've got an APU. Um, oh, yeah. Which it's is even, the, uh, even more of a difference. A huge difference. In fact, you know, the APU, that's the, uh, you know, the integrated GPU. Uh, Intel calls it I, IGPU and IGPU or whatever. But with, you know, the AMD APUs, fast RAM really matters. So if you're getting an APU, you're going to save some money. You're going to get a slower system. Um, but I mean, those quad cores are pretty, pretty fast for the money, but you definitely want to get high speed RAM so that you can play your games, um, and get some extra FPS. Just watch the tutorials and all that. And we'll make some more, you know, layman tutorials. I think we need to make some of those that really talk about all the terms that are involved with overclocking because it can really get confusing, but it's not that big of a deal. After you just learn a few terms, it's not that big of a deal. I don't know. Anything else to add? They want to jump on to another one. Next. Uh, what GPU is your T-Coaster? Uh, that's a, a 9800GX2. Um, this is a BFG. We actually had more than one of those, which is, you know, surprising. And they died pretty much the same way. All caught on fire? Yeah. They literally all did catch on fire. They're like, oh, we've hit our preset, you know, kill limit, and now we're dead. Uh, what would Logan look like if he added a mustache? I'm sorry, this isn't about tech. It's about 5 a.m., and I was thinking about it. Pagoon? It's 5 a.m., what are you doing? Well, I'm just laying in bed thinking about Logan's mustache, brushing against my ear. It's creepy, Pagoon. That's really creepy. It's really creepy. So someone was nice enough, tragedy, to uh, <laughs> Photoshop a mustache onto me. That's like a sir mustache, you know, like one of the... God, I could be... T That's a mustache that you have when you're tying damsels in distress to a railroad. Snadly whiplash. How about this? I just said damsels in distress. Call Anita to Zarkeesian, everybody. <laughs> I hate that. Never mind. <laughs> you shouldn't be thinking about my mustache at 5 in the morning. Infamous VR6 says, 7950 coil wine. Got a slight buzzing that comes and goes on my 7950. It definitely, it's definitely the card and not the PSU or MOBO. Was told maybe a different PSU could eliminate it, but my question is, is the coil wine dangerous and should I just live with it? It's barely noticeable. Only when I'm inches away from the GPU but there's an electrical buzzing. No, it's not the fans or something I'm hi hissing. And it's like... Where's that at? I couldn't find it. What's it, what's the title of it? 7950 Coil Wine. Infamous VR6. Oh, way down there, yeah. Um, So, yeah, this is pretty normal. That's usually a sign that um, there's something up with the power phase design on the card. Um, it's probably a cheaper than reference implementation. Maybe not. Sometimes it is that the power supply and the card don't really agree on the power. Sometimes it's that you've got a phantom AC uh, signal on your 12-volt DC lines. That'll sometimes cause a hum and sometimes cause things to run hotter than they should. Sometimes the 12-volt rail does not have enough amps for the card, and then the card's going to scream and yell about it. I've had That was a problem I had. So. But most likely it's normal for the particular GPU that you have. And, you know, I fixed my problem by changing out the power supply. Yeah, we had a pretty. I had a pretty loud coil whine uh, using the uh, EVGA GTX 770 until I swapped the power supply. But I think it was coming from the graphics card. I think we determined later that that power supply did have some phantom AC voltage on it, but you guys would never be able to figure that out without special equipment. Yeah, you've got an oscilloscope upstairs. Yeah, it's like let's see what's happening. It's like, oh, well, that would do it. Yeah, music Wendell likes. What kind of music does Wendell like? Uh, in the wild, so say, see inbox thirty three for joke. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means either. So, what kind of music do you like? I don't really. This is probably a terrible question. Uh, I mean, there's no wrong answer. Even if you, if you don't like music, I mean, you could say that. I don't. I don't even know. I don't even know. That's why I'm curious. I don't really listen to to music very much. Marilyn Manson, right? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like classical music. Music is a really easy way to sort of manipulate my mood. And so there's like cleaning music or things like that. But generally when I'm programming or doing something like that, I zone out everything. Like I don't hear anything. I don't see anything. 
nothing's happening. It's just a distraction. I find that the quickest way to absolutely ruin my day is to put on hip hop, R and B, or country music. Yeah, I don't really like any of those things. They're all three kind of like the Special Olympics of music, but in a different way. But the radio is so terrible. It is just so... Like, I think maybe it'll come up in conversation, and it, it would be nice to not be completely useless, but the radio is so excruciating. Uh, John666 says he can see you rocking out to this, and it's um 2001 Space Odyssey theme. <laughs> well, that's classical, so, I mean, you know, maybe. It's a cla- That's a classic classical. A classical from a classic movie. That's... Never mind. I Classical reception. Really, I like some of the vocals from uh, the later Final Fantasy, like the Sephiroth theme and things like that. I that, forgot how they go like oh, like the yeah. co- like the choir type stuff. Yeah, that was that was interesting. It was it was different. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. Music's not really a thing. What about bluegrass? You grew up in Eastern Kentucky, and I grew up in Eastern Kentucky, and I enjoy bluegrass. It, it's very upbeat. It's very... You know, I, I don't like that Tennessee bluegrass. I like that, you know, I'm barefoot, I'm on a porch, I've got a banjo, I play it like a, you know, a madman, and I throw cats at my relatives when they come over. I don't know. The aspect of bluegrass that I enjoy is that it is very honest music, if that makes sense. It's very, very much about a person and very emotional. Most of the crap on Maybe the radio... Maybe because they don't have enough sense to be liars. Well, most of the crap on the radio... And most modern music today has been very carefully engineered to be whatever it is. Bluegrass music. Everything, everything on the radio is engineered by the same five people, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it's this, like, oh, who makes your beats? Who it, writes your lyrics? It, Not you. It really is. It's true. Um, so, you know, in terms of, like, background filler music, uh, contemporary jazz. But I would be just as content to hear the Enterprise engine noise. So, I mean... That would probably be more soothing to me. <laughs> Maybe some old school neo bop jazz, you know, like Bella Fleck. Anyway, Bella Fleck is jazz and bluegrass. I think I, I think I like some of the stuff by Daft Punk. That's okay. Oh yeah, I think so. I don't know enough of it, but I don't know. I don't I'd, have. I have to hear it. I don't have enough of an interest in music to seek it out, and some of that is is ruined by um, actions of people in the industry. It's like I don't want anything. It's like oh, the Recording Industry Association of America is like, well, I'm not really interested in this. I gotta get you some heavy metal. <laughs> yeah, there's some heavy metal out there that's really good. I like um, I like the 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 um, the lyrics of Weird Al. They're very clever, and I like that they're clever. But I, I mean, I would I'm just as content to read them as to listen to them. Yeah. Except for maybe Amish Paradise. That's really clever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a question for the two of us, dear Logan and Wendell. No, I'm not gonna do it. What would it take for me to get a group interview with you and the man behind the camera? I've been a fan for a while, and now this interview is solely uh, what you do beyond the camera, the name of the show I'm planning on doing, and uh, you will be first on it. So, Beyond the Camera is the name of the show he's producing. So, which means, if you have not already guessed, that it will be talking about what you do behind the scenes and outside of YouTube, getting a good insight on the daily life of Logan and Wendell. Do you want to comment on what you do when you're not sitting there? Not particularly. (laughs) This is like all I do right now lately. This is all we both do pretty much lately. What with the Haswell launch and all. I just got really sad, like deeply sad. <laughs> there's there's nothing else. No. You know, I was going to climb mountains like twice a week. Yeah, we got busy. I've been so busy. I probably, you probably see it in my face too. It's like, I get like this, I, I mope a lot. You, know, you notice I complain more when I don't climb mountains? Well, we probably are going to do the interview thing with the guy from Unbox Therapy. Oh, yeah, I gotta call Lou. At some point. Lou, we're, if you're watching, hi. We're also doing some things, like we're gearing up for things behind the scenes that you guys don't know about, including larger studio space and blah, blah, blah. And some major giveaways. We're not talking gaming PCs, we're talking major giveaways. Insane giveaways. Like, you're not gonna believe what we're about to pull off, and not my pants. <laughs> No, you can't say that because now we have sponsors, maybe, hopefully, possibly. Okay, so, you know, Luke, send me a link to what you're doing. That sounds pretty cool. Um, nobody's replied to this. It makes me sad. Hmm. The Scottish accent in Inbox 33 was bad. Like you were a hybrid of Irish, Scottish, and Welsh. And for a brief second, oh, for a brief second, I feel offended. <laughs> I've, got, I've got some Scottish blood in me. I think it was offended, too. It started to boil. The Scottish part of me started to boil, and it was kind of like, you know, I had a mini-seizure. 
I have a terrible redneck accent, so you've got no room to complain. Yeah, but I was, you know, like making fun of his people. Oh, my, I... Of my people. <laughs> I think, uh, no, I don't know. No. I was going to say that, but no. See, my great-great-grandfather on my father's side was a West Virginian Sasquatch, so I don't know what. That's similar to Scottish, isn't it? It might be. Sas- Sasquatch and Scottish. <laughs> a Scottish Sasquatch. They had well, to that's how the Sasquatch got here. The Scots invaded. They had to immigrate this over before, here because of deforestation. This is before Christopher Columbus. Because <laughs> what people don't know about the Scots is that they were similar to the Vikings in, this, in the sense that they had boats. I'm making all this up. But I want it to be true because they're my people. I don't know. Yeah, at the end of the day, it turns out we're nerds pretty much 24 hours a day. In all things. Whenever I can, I go outside. And, like, climb a mountain or something. But that's pretty much all I do outside is climb mountains. I'm, I'm big into nature. And my dream job would be um, a, a less foodie version of um, the Bourdain thing. With a little bit more nerd stuff factored in. I would love to, like, travel and, like, climb things. But then nerd out at the end of the day with, a, you know, like, playing. I, I would love to climb a mountain and play a video game on top of the mountain. That'd be cool. All right. Now, this is from uh, Frunjo Kula. That sounds like... Your your username sounds like something that Jabba the Hutt would say. Frunju Kula. Ah, ho, ho, ah, ho, ah. Ho. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> XFX started making their own GPUs, three question marks. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah. You can't see it, but I'm also face palming. Uh what languages uh does Wendell No use? Very simple question. They want to know, um, they know that you've uh, majored in computer science and minored in physics. What languages do you use? Well, I cut my teeth on C and C++. I've had to do a lot of x86 assembler, but I'm pretty sure I've forgotten all that. On, <laughs> <laughs> on, a, on a daily basis, um, it's really just HTML, JavaScript, PHP, some Java, not a lot. Some C sharp, not a lot. We have an app. Applic- yeah, we have an application team that does stuff with .NET and C sharp, but there are other people over there that know what they're doing, and I don't have to fool with it, and so I just it's fine. Okay, I'm, you know I'm going to add on to his question because I'm curious as well. This is from Brennan, by the way. What's your favorite language and why? Ooh. And if it, the entire world could be coded in a language, what would it be? Hmm. See, that's really hard because I'm going to have to pick one of the more obscure languages. Whatever you want. Well, I say Python. No, well, you know, actually, Python. It's not bad. There, see, things are happening with languages, and I like. It's a it's a hard question to answer because low level languages like C and C plus plus are awesome, because they they really are just one step away from the hardware, and so you know exactly what the hardware is doing, so they're really powerful. But it's also tends to be slower to code in them, and your your brain has to be exercised more as compared with say like C sharp. C Sharp's actually not a bad language. It's really good. It's really easy to make a lot of applications really quickly. But the trade-off is that it's doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes and you can have some really obscure problems. So that's really hard. I enjoy programming with PHP, but it's because I have the discipline to program with good design patterns. And with things like Ruby and Python, they force you to have good design patterns. They force you to be a better programmer, so you just sort of naturally get used to doing it that way where with php you can do everything all over the world but if i had to pick one language it'd probably be perl because you can do anything with perl although my perl's really not very good you know i think my css was pretty organized that we wrote for the website it's the most organized thing i've ever done in my entire life and it still looked like garbage <laughs> yeah we're, we're gonna be rewriting that with the version two like yeah. we, we literally like sneezed that out in a couple of weekends and it's it's been it's like it's long overdue for a replacement <laughs> So I don't. There's there is a there is there is a ton of other languages that I have to deal with. Well, like the C and C plus plus, I still deal with on uh, the Arduino, and so it's not quite the same. It's GCC. The libraries are different, but it's kind of the same. But in the organization, we have so many people that deal with so many different languages. It's kind of nuts. Last question. This is from Sean Mullen. All right, how do I prevent headphone hair? Well, I've been a long-term headphone user on my home computer, but recently I've been growing my hair out a, uh, a bit and noticed any pair of headphones I use for over 30 minutes causes a distinct indent in my hair to form, and I look a little crazy with a noticeable dent in my hair. Any tips? 
Yeah, you could start dressing to match the dent in your hair. Why don't you be a hipster? <laughs> because that's when ugly is cool. You just need really expensive clothes and really expensive vintage clothing that looks like you purchased it at, at like a thrift store, but you really purchased it at like a, you know, an, somewhere on the corner thrift store when it was like $90 for your jacket. And then you're going to want to make condescending looks at everybody because that's going to take the focus off of the dent in your hair because the condescending glances that you're, glan that you're you know, giving to other people are going to direct all the attention that way. And then they're going to make condescending, condescending glances, glances back. But they're not going to be at your hair. They're going to be at your clothing and mainly your shoes. You want to wear the most scuffed up, ridiculous looking pair of leather shoes, but they have to cost over $300. That's the bottom line. And everything will be solved. Did I fix that? Think that thing that I fixed everything right there? Yeah, that's pretty good. Or you could buy a set like a set of the uh, neckband headsets or earbuds. But I don't like earbuds. They hurt my ears, and I don't think they sound extremely good. I mean, the Meze sounded okay. Uh, Kane just did the new uh, Flux from from Steel Series. Both of us agree that they're not things that we would wear on a daily basis because we do not like earbuds. But they both sounded really good. So the other option is to wear your headset so that it's like extended a little bit on the top and it sticks up, and then they'll kind of slide down, and that's kind of annoying. Just get a set of uh, the uh, like Siberia neckband from Steel Series. They they gotta go around the back. They sound pretty good. They're not quite as good as studio head, you know, like a studio headset, but they sound pretty good. Well, that didn't help at all. So I think you should subscribe because we're not gonna help you guys out. We're just gonna make up crap like that. It's down there. If you're on YouTube, the button is down there. Down there. <laughs> I think, unless they move everything around again. Uh, you guys um, have a wonderful day. No. <laughs> Bye.